Hi everybody, it's Denny Joe here. So I saw this really cool farmhouse color bundle by Apple Barrel on Amazon and it had all these blue and brown colors that made me think it would make a really cool ocean pour. So I bought it and I am going to do a step-by-step -step ocean pour. And I'm going to show you everything that you need. Um, so there, that's the pouring medium, the flood flow trawl, and the paints. The link is in the description so you can go get that exact bundle. And your cups. Um, so let me go over the list. So what you're going to need are 11 9 ounce cups, 4 3 ounce Dixie cups plus 1 extra, 1 24 ounce or larger cup, 1 16 by 20 inch canvas, the paint set, flood flow trawl, stir sticks, silicone oil or hair serum, and gloves. Alright, so I'm going to mix up a paint. First, take some flood flow trawl and pour it into a separate cup. It's much easier to pour from that cup than it is from the big jug. So now I'm going to take um, the sample color here. This is Warm Buff. And I'm going to squeeze the entire bottle into the cup. It's kind of gloopy. That's okay. That's expected. I think this has probably been sitting on a shelf for a while. Um, but squeeze that all out. Um, you won't be able to get it all out. They'll, you can still tell there will be a little bit of remnant clinging to the sides and stuff. Don't worry about that so much. Um, just get out as much as you can until it's minimally dripping. Um, and then we're going to add Floetrol directly into the bottle. And so that's going to help kind of get some of that off the sides. All right, so I'm still kind of squeezing here. I think I got most of it out. Going to give it a couple shakes. This is a good activity to like sit around with friends and do. Mixing all your paints is going to take probably 30 minutes. So I'm adding in the flow trowel here. I had poured it in that separate cup. I'm going to pour it all the way up to the top as close as I can without spilling. So you can leave a little bit of room if you want to be safe. I'm holding it over top of that paint cup too in case I get any drips. It'll go right into the cup. And then just squirt that or pour that right back into the cup. And so that gives you a near one-to-one -one ratio, one part of the flow trowel and one part of the paint. And the part in this case is the paint bottle. Again, it's going to take a little bit of squishing and a little bit of patience. All right, minimal dripping is going on. I can close that up and throw it away. So I'm going to take a stir stick. I use popsicle sticks. If you have, have reusable stir sticks, that is fine as well. And you're going to stir that up until it's nice and smooth. And so when you hold it up and stream it off the stick, you won't see inconsistencies. So it won't like glue one second and then stream the next second. It might like gloop off right at first when you start to tilt it off the stick, but what I mean is like midstream, all of a sudden you see a gloop. That means it's not mixed well enough. So here I'm testing the consistency and it's already getting pretty close. That's looking pretty good. So after I'm done with this one, this would be a really good time to pause the video and take your 30 minutes to mix up all your paints. Do not mix the black, gray fox, or chocolate sprinkle. Leave those ones out. Here's a great time to pause, and when we come back, we'll mix in cell activator. All right, welcome back. You should have nine colors. Since you left out the black, gray fox, and chocolate sprinkle. 
and then the warm buff that we already mixed. I'm just showing you that we're going to mix that one separately, which we already did. All right, let's get these out of the way here. And I'm going to get my cell activators. There's two popular choices, the Coconut ha uh, Milk Hair Serum by OGX and then plain straight silicone oil. Um, and the one I have here was um, Artist Loft. But I like to use the hair serum. I don't know why, but I, I like it better. So I'm going to get a separate cup to mix this in. And I just put a couple pump, or not mix, but to drip it from. So I put a couple pumps in there, and then I'm going to make just a little bit of a tear, like a angle at the edge, so it's easier to drip. So into the paint, I am going to put two tiny drops, just one little drop. I'm not pouring it in, I'm dripping it in. See, one drop, two drops. And then we're going to mix that in really well. We're going to repeat this process for all of the blue colors. So that ends up being four of the paints. And while we mix up the other colors, I'm just going to play some music. And then I'll be right back. All right, so now it is time to put the colors all together into your large cup that you will be ultimately doing your pour from. So I'm kind of layering the colors here. Um, I was thinking to go from dark to light, um, but then I had um, the gray, so I kind of put that in the middle. Um, so it, it went it went dark to light with the gray in the middle. And then you'll see too when I'm uh, layering them I do add in a little bit of white here and there. So we'll start with the darkest blue. And we'll just dump these right into each other so just straight down they'll sink into each other sometimes it'll look like you can see it going right underneath the other color it doesn't even want to stay on top you can already see some cells happening it's a really cool effect it's kind of magical seeing that if if this is your first time it's a lot of fun seeing that if not <laughs> It's really addictive to watch that happen every time. It's kind of like mixing a potion. So yeah, we're getting a lot of cool cell action. Ooh, look at all those cells.
So when you're adding in your white, um, don't add in a lot. Just add in a little bit because you want, we're going to leave some of the white um, for the wave, for the, the, the white in between the two at the end, between the brown and the blues. So I think at the end, when I was looking at the white cup, I had about like a pinky's height, width height, not the length of the pink pinky, but like the width of your pinky um, left in the cup. All right, so we're gonna set this aside. And now we're gonna do the brown colors for the sand. So this uh, we're putting together into another nine ounce cup. There it is. And so we got that deep yellow tan color, then the, the warm beige, and then the really light yellowy color. We just repeat that. Now these colors don't have silicone in them, so you're not going to get the little bubbles popping up. Now this comes pretty close to the top of the cup. When you're done, take a popsicle stick or your stir stick and give it a gentle stir. And, and you're going to Give it more stirring than you think. So I stopped here prematurely and then I was like, nope, I need to do it more. So if you like, you have to lift up the paint a little bit gently so that it's, you can swirl it all together and you can see all of the colors on top, but they're not really mixing together yet. It's more of a swirl look in, in the paint. And that'll help create more of a gradient in the colors when you pour them out. And then I'm just showing here that I left about that finger's width of um, white left in the cup. Okay, so we're going to set that aside and we're almost ready to pour. But before we do, let's give it some thought on how we want our composition to look. How we, what way we want to lay out our paints. Um, so it's up to you. You could do the top like two thirds the blue or you could do like an angle and do like a, a diagonal wave. And um, so that's what we're going to do. And as I pour the paints, I'm going to do kind of like a squiggle S shape. So I'm kind of showing here what I'm going to do. Um, and then when I'm actually pouring them, I'm going to flip the video around here so that you can, it's more your orientation. So let's pour. All right, here we go. We're going to do like a zigzag S curvy shape, trying not to overlap too much. There will be some overlap because you don't want gaps. Oh my goodness, there are so many cool cells, guys. Wow. I love that hair serum for making cells. This uh, does a really good job. The colors all mixed together kind of look like when sun is hitting the top of the water and it gets all the sparkly action going on. Um, it's really cool looking. All right, I'm just dripping out as much as I can from the cup. And then <laughs> we're going to tilt. And we're going to try to tilt slowly. And um, try to keep as much of the paint on the canvas as possible. But there will be some dripping. Um, here I'm just looking at the white thinking if I want to add some like waves into the middle of the white or in the middle of the blue and you I chose not to but if you wanted to you could I would just suggest following the contours the lines of the blues already is what I would do if I was going to do it but I decided not to I thought that the lines themselves already kind of looked wavy enough. 
So here we go with the tilting. It's it's slower in person. All these videos online make it look like it's super fast, but you want to take your time. And the reason for this is it helps the cells keep their shape. So if you were to pour really fast, those cells would get very elongated. And you're still going to get some of that um, squishing just from tilting, but if the faster you tilt, the more squished and broken the cells will get. So every time I tilt to that upper left corner first, and then I come all the way back to the middle with the weight of the paint. So you see I'm just tilting back in the same direction that I came from. And once I can see that the weight of that paint is back to the middle, then I can decide what direction I'm going to go again. And in this case, I'm going to anchor it all the way down to the lower right um, to try to create as much of a straight line as possible. A straight diagonal line. And then I'll slowly um, tilt the paint back to the middle again. And then once the weight is back in the middle, uh, you can tilt to the upper right corner. These cells are looking so cool. The more that they stretch and open up, you can see all of the different colors inside of them. And there's a lot of multicolor rings going on. It really does look like shimmery top of water. So I'm going to bring that all the way back to the middle. Alright, I think we're almost there. We got that little bit of a corner down there that uh, I'm going to tilt all the way down to the right again. Just to cover that, the rest of that corner. And then we'll tilt back to the middle. All right, guys, this is looking very cool. Um, my hands got quite messy, so you could either wipe them off with a paper towel or change your gloves if you had extra gloves. Um, I am changing my gloves. And now we can do the browns for the sand. And we're gonna kinda do the same motions here curvy S shape with a little bit of overlap. And then we're going to tilt to the upper left. All the way up until it covers the canvas. And it's going to pull some of the blue with it, and that's okay. We're going to go back and cover that up with white anyways and then tilt it back down to the lower right and then I kind of bring it back to the middle a little bit and I realize I need to cover the lower left corner So I'm going to add a little bit more brown. If you, you guys might be able to get it all in one go. All right, there we go. That looks really nice. 
And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, this looks really good the way that it is. And I kind of don't want to add in the white waves. Um, I do ultimately add the waves, but if you wanted to leave it like this, you could. Um, it, I think it looks really cool seeing the stripes of the sand that are pretty straight and not and smooth and compared to all of the bubbly sparkly uh, water uh, and it's it's pretty interesting to see them right next to each other without having the white in between all right so I am putting the cups um, resituating them underneath the canvas here. They had gotten a little um, out of place. So we're all resituated and now we're going to add in the white stripe for the water. Um, I'm just going to talk about that process here. Um, there's lots of different methods you can do. Um, some people use a straw to blow out the squiggles. And I'm, I would actually suggest that. Um, I didn't have a straw on hand and I was feeling so inspired and anxious and excited to do this that um, I didn't get one. And so I end up having to lift the canvas up to my face and blow the curvy shapes into the waves um, so you don't actually get to see that very well on the camera um, but basically I blow staggered dots so I don't blow all of the white I kind of I blow a spot out and then I skip a step spot and then I blew another spot out um, and so when that time comes you'll see that Right here, I'm adding in some staggered dots of white um, so that the weight of the paint in those spots is heavier. I was trying to get some natural curve to happen here. So I'm going to put in these dots staggered into the white, and then I'm going to lift up the canvas and tilt it down. And it's going to, because those spots with the more white are going to be heavier, or there's going to be more, more to move in those spots, you'll start to see that they start to drag down tilt faster. Uh, so you can see how it's starting to get a little bit of a squiggly edge to it. Um, it didn't end up being as squiggly as I liked, so that's why I went through it in blue on the edges to make it more squiggly. Again, it's preference though. If, if you like the look of that, you could just leave that. And so here I'm starting to blow in the swiggles. Um, I'm gonna, there's not really much I can talk about while I'm doing this. Um, but we are almost finished, guys. So I think I'm just gonna play some music here um, to finish it out. And you can just, you know, watch the rest and see what the finished result looks like. I hope you have fun doing this. It's a real step by step. You could actually paint along while I'm doing this. Um, and I encourage you to try it and show me the results. I do have a Facebook page. It's called Pour It Studio with Denny Joe. Um, and so if you want to jump over there, it's not a group, but you can jump over there. Tell me about your experience. You can also tell me about your experience in the comments below here on YouTube. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoy watching. I hope you learned something. And thank you so much.
So here are the dried results. It dried just a little bit darker, um, but the colors really held up really well. I'm actually kind of surprised with the Apple Barrel paints. Um, but yeah, they look really nice. There's no cracking. Um, and I'm really excited how this turned out. I hope you enjoy.